Hello and welcome to this week's video briefing. It's been a dramatic few days in Africa. This time last week it was that police opened fire on striking miners at the Marikana platinum mine not far from Johannesburg. Some 40 people uh, lost their lives and the impact has rippled out beyond that particular setting into the markets, into concern generally about the mining industry in South Africa and indeed beyond. This week we had the confirmation that Mele Zanawa, Zanawi, the long-standing ruler of Ethiopia, had passed away. That's a crucial country in the region for all sorts of reasons, and so we want to spend a few moments exploring some of the business and implications of these two dimensions, and I'm here with Dr. Joe Ford, our senior Africa analyst, precisely to do so. Joe, hello there, and we'll start, if we may, with South Africa, where there's been a good deal of media concern markets concern about platinum, about the mining sector, about the outlook for South Africa generally, and time I think therefore for us to get a sense of proportion as far as this industrial unrest is concerned, its scale, and importantly, its significance and implications. Thank you, Graham. Yes, I think there is a need uh, for some sort of corrective in relation to the prevailing media coverage in the sense that uh, although a significant incident in itself, as you say, uh, if one even looks at, at Lundman at the Marikana mine itself, the proportion of striking workers is, is only about 10% of the, of the total workforce, both formally employed and, and contracted. Um, and while there have been waged new wage claims at, at related platinum mines, these too uh, don't necessarily involve more than uh, you know, a, a relatively small proportion of the labour force the bulk of whom are still loyal to the established traditional uh, National Union of Mine Workers, the mm. sort of giant of, of the mining industry in South Africa. So uh, I think that both the, the in terms of the scale of the numbers of, of miners who are actually involved in this more militant activity and uh, the idea that it will necessarily spread from the platinum sector to gold and iron ore and, uh, and so on, uh, needs a bit of revision. There's, there are a number of features of the platinum sector in South Africa in particular that are unique to it in terms of mm. all sorts of issues, for example, the way in which workers are accommodated off-site and so on. So they don't necessarily pertain to other sectors. No, you're, lo you're locating it essentially then in, in a sort of rivalry between trade unions about representing the body of men, and presumably it mostly is men, working there, rather than a signal of a wider discontent within the platinum mining sector? Well, a bit of both. I, I am, but I, I was going to go on to say, I suppose, that, that, that really there are some bigger issues there. Mm. And, and partly the, these were there before the Marikana incident, and partly they're going to be compounded by that incident. Mm. So that the general negative outlook for South Africa, uh, you know, it's a country that in, in the last 10 years of commodities boom shrank in terms of mining output and, and attracting mining investment. And uh, we've had the nationalization debate, the uncertainty around labor policy generally. Uh, and this story, particularly as it's received outside of South Africa, uh, is only going to compound that uncertainty about the country as a, as a mining destination and in indeed as an investment des destination generally. That's perhaps, to go back to the uh, corrective point, mm. that's perhaps a little bit uh, unfortunate for South Africa's case. Uh, in general, uh, in the post-apartheid period, unions have had a moderating effect, I suppose, on the potential for wider militancy in, in the South African economy, given that it's a country with such high mm. levels of income inequality and, and sort of this relative deprivation yeah. that people feel around unmet expectations. So uh, certainly, I mean, it's 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 not a surprise to say that uh, the way in which the incident has been broadcast around the world and, and covered around the world uh, will, won't do anything good for South Africa's investment image, even though the, the, the underlying factors and, and the underlying institutions to deal with labor relations in South Africa are relatively well entrenched and they work relatively well. Okay. It is, of course, the fact that no platinum has, been has, platinum has been produced, so it's a small number of people affected. Um, but as far as the output is concerned, there hasn't been any. So that issue needs to be resolved. Yeah. Um. There is that issue, and, and, and uh, I mean, platinum is related, I as, as a commodity related to, very closely to global demand yes. dynamics, its use in the motor industry in mm -hmm. particular. Uh, 
Uh, and so there are, again, there are a lot of things that can be limited to the platinum sector that don't necessarily apply, for example, to gold. Um, but, uh, you know, a, a slowdown in outputs of, of platinum exports from South Africa will have some effect on, on the country's overall mm -hmm. uh, uh, export output. But the wider question really is, is if for those watching the sort of narrowing fiscal space in South Africa mm -hmm. and uh, the way in which the ANC government will struggle in future to deal with the, the expectations of mm. a very high uh, proportion of unemployed people and persons employed but not at on terms which they find agreeable mm. um, and whether it will, uh, how and whether it will, yeah, okay. will deal with that. I mean, it's often overlooked that, uh, that this year the government successfully, relatively successfully negotiated wage increase uh, deals with True. public sector unions who are and uh, public servants account for 40% of, of government spending. Um, so that's, that's the sort right. of story which is overlooked with the Marikana okay, incident, fair I enough. suppose. Let's, um, before we leave South Africa, just focus very briefly on the political implications of this. Uh, President Zuma had, I suppose, inevitably, a somewhat cool reception when he went to the mine yesterday and spoke to those on strike. The extent to which this presents a challenge to him, the extent to which uh, people can use this against him, and particularly perhaps the extent to which for Julius Malema, um, the firebrand um, nationalizer, uh, that this presents a route back somehow would mm. be of interest, I think. Well, uh, I think what, what the Malema factor has done is that it's opened a space in South African politics that was perhaps inevitable but hadn't yet been opened, which was which made it acceptable even though in the, the ANC centenary year of a proud and uh, a proud sort of organization made it acceptable to some extent for the first time to challenge uh, the leadership and the authority in an open mm. um, uh, sort of uh, open way and so whether Malema himself becomes the figurehead for that wider body of discontents whether they are mm -hmm. the youth unemployed or unionized mm -hmm. uh, members uh, remains unclear. He may be accused of opportunism in some way. But certainly the, 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 the question still remains whether the ANC's preoccupation or the ANC leadership's preoccupation with sort of factional intrigue and, and leadership issues has, has led to them and, and other parties in the alliance taking their eye off mm. some of them, the constituencies that they, that they normally would, would address and therefore leaves that political space open to less predictable elements, I suppose. Let's turn to Mela Zanawi, um, a very powerful and um, symbolic as well as substantive figure in African politics, absent for quite a long time before his death was announced this week, mm. but now absent in a profound sense. So let us think about two issues. One, the prospects for Ethiopian pol political, social, economic development after him, and also the extent to which his uh, departure removes a powerful interlocutor for the continent, an unrepresented one, perhaps uh, one challenged in that role, perhaps, but nonetheless someone with whom Western leaders felt they could establish a rapport and do business. Let's start with the domestic dimension. Well, I mean, a very significant event, but as you say, not unexpected. He hadn't been seen in public since June. Mm -hmm. And uh, although uh, Ethiopian politics is very opaque and therefore it's difficult to make these sorts of uh, these sorts of predictions. That I think the fact that in all the time that he hasn't been seen in public, we haven't seen a great upswing in, mm. in either unrest in, in Addis Ababa on the streets or visible signs of, wow. of, of the, the, the sort of leadership within the ruling party, within the, mm. the, the Tigray element of the ruling party um, that hasn't been visible, suggests that it's not necessarily now going to, to unravel in that sense. In other words, the shared and common interests of those who lead the country around Meles um, uh, are such that they've, I think that they're likely to work in the way they have since June to manage this transition mm. in, in, in a relatively smooth way. Having said that, uh, and naturally, which uh, as tends to follow uh, a, a very dominant and highly centralized, highly personalized leadership, there, and the fact that no obvious successor was left behind, um, Inevitably, we're entering a period of, of relative uncertainty yeah. inside Ethiopian politics, um, which, uh, and it must be remembered, this is a country that since the Second World War has only had three changes of government. Mm -hmm. Each okay. one of those has been extremely painful and generally quite long. Um, 
and the question really is is whether this country which has a long long history of statehood mm -hmm. that doesn't have very strong institutions uh, can manage those forces and let's think finally then about the role that Miller's had as if we may be a, a little bit flip Mr. Africa here was a man with whom on questions of debt sustainable growth uh, continent-wide issues um, the West and um, indeed other countries felt they could deal and that he would be a conduit through which things could be achieved that otherwise might not be. I think that's true uh, and he will be missed in that sense both mm. by the collective of African countries and by especially the West in terms of, mm. of that interlocutor relationship. But I think it's worth probably noting that at least in the post-2005 period, so in the second half of, of the new millennium mm. decade, uh, when a lot of these debt and other issues were, were, were current, Mele's uh, credibility in, in, in representing Africa in those sorts of uh, uh, forums was in decline anyway, given the way in which political space was narrowing in his own country uh, and the criticism of, of the sort of long-standing nature of his own rule. So, uh, but it does, there is a vacuum. We've talked before about the African Union mm leadership as a whole and uh, when we're dealing with regional security issues and uh, continent-wide issues that vacuum is probably being fairly acutely felt. Joe, thanks very much and thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this discussion. Africa and the mining sector feature prominently in our work at Oxford Analytica both on the analysis and advisory services. If you'd like to find out more about how we can help you in those areas please let us know by contacting our website. In the meantime, goodbye.